Right, this is the first of two videos on setting up uh, the new style Mod IO together with the Mac 3 plugin to drive Mod IOs. The hardware I've got here is a new board uh, which can be recognized because its switching power supply doesn't have the big regulator with its heatsink, so that's a new board. Uh, the first board, so this is connected up to the RS232 via this ribbon cable here. Uh, if you've got more than one board, needs to be the new style board. Uh, others can be the old style, and so here's an old one. It's got the linear regulator with its heatsink on it. Now, on the new board, I've got a toggle switch, uh, and that is connected to terminal uh, 12 to ground. So I've just got one input on it. Uh, and on the old style board, I've got analog 1 connected to this potentiometer, which is powered with the ground and the plus 5. I've got a push button switch, which is connected between uh, data in 1 and data out 1. That is going to be one crossing of a uh, keyboard matrix switch. Uh, and I've got an MPG, which is connected up to these terminals and powered from this side of the uh, old mod I.O. They've both got LCDs um, uh, and so that's the test setup. Now let's fire up Mac 3 and start configuring the system. I'm going to create a brand new profile. So we start from scratch. We're going to clone it from Mac 3 mil uh, mod I.O. vid for this video. And having created it, I'm going to load Mac 3 running it. Now, we first of all have to tell Mac 3 that we're using Modbus, uh, and we have to configure uh, the Modbus. So we'll go to Ports and Pins, define that we're having Modbus input output, and define that we're not using the old style Modbus, but we're using the new plugin to drive it. So we apply that. Now that won't take effect until I reload Mac 3. So if I go to set up Modbus Control, I get the old style setup. If you get that, then uh, you need to reboot Mac 3. So I'm going to close it down, go into it again. Uh, this is the profile we're using. And now, if we configure, set up the Modbus control, we get this table rather than uh, all those checkboxes and things that we had before. Right, now then, I am plugged into COM port number one of my computer. It is configured at 57600 Bode. It uses 8 bits, 1 stop bit, no parity. I'm going to say 100 millisecond timeout for errors in the Modbus configuration. Uh, I'm not connecting it via RS-485. The two boards are connected via that, but uh, not the computer. And I want uh, it to run. So now I can access uh, Modbus devices. Now you may want to satisfy yourself that all is well. Uh, by doing test Modbus at this stage. So I've got port number 1, 57600. Now I'm actually going to look at my slave address 2. I'm going to look at the MPG register because that's the easiest to look at. So I open that, I read the MPG register and as I click the MPG, uh, if I got it right, then uh, I would be able to see uh, I wonder what I've got uh, configured wrong. Uh, it's not 11.57, it's 11.50. So there is the value of the MPG and as I click it, its value changes. So I know that I'm talking to the Modbus. Now, you wouldn't necessarily need to do that, but so now that has Mac talking to 
Modbus devices in general. So now we need to tell it that we've got some mod IO, which are examples of Modbus devices, uh, and so we will go to the plugin, we will enable it, and it is as well after changing plugin enables to go out and back in again. So I'll go out and back in again. Right, now we're going to want to actually do things, so let's go out of e-stop by going offline. And I'm now going to configure my plugin. We haven't told it anything about the mod IOs that I've got connected. So let's define the first one. I find it you can call them what you like. I find it convenient to call it numbered with the same as the slave port address. So it's on COM port 1 and the new mod IO I've got the switch set to 1. It's got an LCD and I'm going to use high speed polling. Right, we've got two mod IOs, so I'm going to new another one. So mod IO 2, this is going to be slave port uh, 2. I'm going to not define it with high speed polling, just, uh, well now I will actually, it's got the MPG on, so it's probably as well too. So now Mac 3 knows about two mod IOs. If they were new mod IOs, we wouldn't know how they were configured. They in fact usually come with the switch position set to naught. That is the default configuration. And in the default configuration, you, you just get digital inputs and outputs. We want to use special inputs and outputs, so we can't use the default configurations. So I'm not on switch naught, I'm on switch one. And I need to configure what uh, is actually connected to my mod IOs because the processor in the mod IO needs to know what's connected to its pins. Uh, one pin can do lots of different jobs depending on this configuration. So let's configure mod IO1. This is the old one uh, which has got virtually nothing connected to it. It's got an LCD uh, where we haven't got an analog connected to it. Uh, we're going to use its discrete functions. Uh, we haven't got any MPGs. Uh, we haven't got the frequency counter. Um, let's, for the sake of argument, leave its outputs blinking. Uh, we don't need uh, an error gap, although, well, that's actually the default, so we'll, we're happy with that. Let's write that configuration into the flash memory on the mod I.O. So send is going to send it to the mod I.O. You get a little bit of flashing on its... Uh, red and green LEDs, uh, and that configuration won't take effect unless we reset it. So I reset it. Its LCD now displays the configuration. I've got the serial number, I've got uh, the bode rate it's running at, I've got what ID, that's to say which slave address it is, uh, and I've got the line uh, saying how it's configured, D-A-L-M, blah, 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 blah. So that mod IO is set up uh, how I want it. Now mod IO2, well, let's configure its hardware. I've been playing with this before so it ought to be configured correctly already. It's got an LCD, we're going to use the analog inputs, we're going to use the discrete input outputs, and I'm going to, I've got one encoder MPG connected on to, that's Jack 10, terminals 14 and 15. I'm not using the other one, uh, so I don't need to define that. Uh, I I'm using the matrix key scanning, so I enable that, uh, and I'm not blinking any of the outputs. So I send that configuration, I reset that mod IO, so we get a little bit of flashing uh, on the lights, and its LCD uh, tells me that it's serial number 17, uh, its ID is 2, slave address 2, so that's all looking fine. So that has uh, configured Mac 3, so it knows it's using Modbus. It's configured uh, the two mod IOs into Mac 3, so it knows what slave addresses they're at. Uh, it's configured uh, what p the actual mod IO hardware with what peripherals I've got connected to it. 
So in fact that is ready to go. If we do a done and an OK, uh, we would be ready to tell Mac 3 how uh, to use these mod IOs. The red and green transmit receive lights are blinking on both mod IOs so that I've got communication going between them. Uh, just before we exit this video, uh, let me show you how the table that was blank uh, has now got filled. We've got the name of the device and we've got it's got inputs, outputs and because we enabled the LCD uh, it's got the LCD. They're enabled, it tells us what slave they are, uh, it tells us what refresh rate we're at. We set both of them at the high speed refresh rate. Uh, it gives uh, the address of the start of transfer of these Modbus variables in there. Uh, how many registers are going to be transferred? So this defines the polling function that Mac 3 is doing on the Modbus, the Mod IO devices. So every 50 milliseconds it transfers the nine input registers and sends the two output registers and every 200 milliseconds it updates the LCD device. Now you can change the refresh rate in here by editing it and applying it. Supposing we decided that in fact it was perfectly alright because we hadn't got any MPGs or anything fast uh, to change the new mod IO, the first one, to 100. If we apply that, that will now affect the polling. It makes the flashing lights on the polling look slightly strange because one of them is being polled at a different rate from the other. Right, I'll finish this video now. The second video will show how we can connect all these peripherals we've got on our mod IOs up to Mac 3.